what other people think when they see these horrifying images. Horror, fear, destruction, and you, our dear subscribers, see some opportunities to develop some geothermal power. Now, how do we do that? Let's take a look. Now welcome back to the channel where we learn more about the ongoing sustainable solutions to global problems and we're continuing our explorations of renewables and today talking about geothermal power. What is that? Okay, quick quiz for you. What is hotter? The magma that we sit on? The overcooked lasagna? Or me? Yeah, that's right. It's magma. <laughs> If you dig down for 10 kilometers, you're gonna find 50 times more energy than all the oil and gas we have. You can see the geothermal power in process with the naked eye when the heat from the Earth's crust warms underground reservoirs of water and then it goes all the way up and can be seen as steam and that is some energy which, which can be used and exploited in different ways as well. Here's the simple one. Uh, it is when the underground steam goes into the turbine, spinning it and making the generator produce electricity. Simple as a carrot, right? Another cool method is called flash steam. It is when hot liquid from the uh, underground is driven into a tank on the surface, where it quickly gets cooled down and turns into vapor, which drives the turbine. Some advanced stuff is called binary cycle power. It is, sounds like this because it was invented in the USSR. There are two liquids. One of them comes from the ground, and it heats up in other special liquids, which has a lower boiling temperature. You should keep in mind that there are liquids and gases that uh, have lower boiling temperatures than 100 degrees. Body temperature, for example. And this gas gets heated up by the water, also evaporates and drives the turbine. It's called a heat transfer fluid, if you're interested. This geothermal activity is usually seen where tectonic plates of the Earth meet and shift. Take a look at the map and you will see where you can mine for clean energy. But hey, won't that be an exclusive thing only for Iceland and Indonesia? No, time marches on and so does progress. Engineers have learned how to dig into geothermal uh, water layers and produce some power from that. And if there is no water there, like in Europe for example, then the engineers just inject the water in the bedrock so hard that they fracture it and create a man-made reservoir and then uh, it heats up and they can't heat to the surface. This method is called hot dry rock, which is very creative in my opinion. The depth of such a well would be between 3 and 10 kilometers, but it is rarely as big as 10 kilometers though. The deepest research hole was 12 kilometers deep and it was located in Soviet Union. Uh, they couldn't go any deeper because, big surprise, it's so hot down there. The water from the reservoir can be used directly to heat up and cool down houses. Because the temperature a couple of meters below the soil is a constant and if you run some water through pipes that afterwards go into the house, uh, it will uh, be warming it up in the winter and doing the opposite in summer. Or just use this energy to heat up a pool. That's what I would do. God, I hate cold water. And that is actually what our ancestors did 5,000 years ago. I guess they also hate cold water, right? This technology features low emissions and small physical footprint. A phrase which here means it doesn't take up much space. It is different from spot to spot, of course. In St. Rosa, they are injecting wastewater into the soil to produce more geothermal energy. And in some regions, it can bring some minerals out, which can be filtered out and sold separately. Yes, it is only a teeny tiny speck of the overall energy game, but it is a reliable and consistent source and has a lot of undeveloped potential. Yet, if you do it like a moron, which is often the case, it can lead to a drop of underground temperature and then we're all in big trouble. If we look at the tectonic plate map again, we will see why the countries that generate more than 15% of their electricity from geothermal sources are El Salvador, Kenya, Philippines, Iceland, New Zealand, Costa Rica. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Why? <laughs> Why don't you know, Papa? Because I didn't subscribe to the guy with the bow tie. <laughs> because they are on the border of the tectonic plates. 
Sounds logical enough, right? You're goddamn right. Some downsides include possible emissions from the reservoirs, it can also get pretty stinky out there, and oh, it's expensive as well to build a geothermal well. The saving from the direct use of the thermal energy can be cheaper than fossils by 80%. There are approximately 14,000 megawatts of power available today. Compared to hydroelectricity, which is explained in this video, it's not much, but the potential is impressive. In short, free reliable heat, no emissions and doesn't take up much space and has a lot of potential, but expensive and needs lots of preparation and is not that developed. It was fun talking to you about geothermal energy. I'm going to cover more renewables in other videos, so don't forget to subscribe and check out our Patreon channel for awesome and witty travel diaries from Africa. You're gonna love them. And if you have some additions, let me know in the comments below. Remember, we all came to this video to learn. So the more you add, the better. That was it for today. I'll see you soon. And until then, ciao.